Anatomical terminology can be very confusing to begin with, but if you take it slow and practice often and use the suggestions in this booklet, that'll help. As you can see, there are lots of reasons why you should be proficient at anatomical terminology, but of course for now, the prime one is to get past your exam. The real reason for giving a very specific meaning to a word in anatomical terminology is to reduce the amount of com uh, confusion or miscommunication. While this is an example of a really technical diagnosis on a, on a case, it wouldn't be unusual as you become more experienced to have to deal with a situation like this where the client is left with this diagnosis and they want you to interpret it. The key thing to remember on this slide is that change of naming below the knee on the hock. And this is of course because the uh, study of the horse is based off the study of the human body. So everything below the knee is actually the hand and then the finger and everything below the hock is the foot and the toe. So these are terms that we use every day in the shop with the students to get them practiced at using them. So closer to the attached end of the limb we always describe as proximal and the opposite of that would be distal closer to the ground and you can think of structures within the hoof where you could use that so the the proximal border of the hoof wall will be up in the coronary band region and the distal border would be on the ground surface uh, axial and abaxial we don't use too much but there are ligaments of the pastern joint where that's how they're described because one pair is closer to the midline and another pair is further away from the midline. But then probably the most common terms that we use are lateral for the outside face of the leg and medial for the inside face of the leg. Sometimes there's confusion on the term medial and median. Uh, the, the term you can see here, median, means a cut from dorsal to palmar or plantar or from cranial to caudal that splits the tissue on the longest axis from front to back. Whereas medial is the face of the limb closest to the other limb of the pair. One of the challenges with anatomical study is that it's a bit of a moving target. It's not that long ago we used to use the terms anterior and posterior. Now we use dorsal and palmar or plantar or cranial or caudal instead of anterior and posterior. And also we used to use the terms sensitive and insensitive and then it changed to corium and now it seems to be changing again to dermis and epidermis. What, what's happening is we're trying to get on the same page as veterinarians so that we're all speaking the same language. I find labeling drawings one of the best ways to learn the terms and then of course try to use the term in a sentence to describe whatever it is you're talking about. Once you have a grasp of the basic terms you have the building blocks to really get a handle on anatomical terminology and understanding the anatomy of the horse, um, the bits and pieces, how they work and what can go wrong.